Chapter 3081 A Great Beauty, Economics, said Lengxi Oiao. That was the major she planned to choose in university, but she had no intention of telling them that she actually wasn't a college student yet. Anyway, Lengxi Oiao had told Ling Tanki and Fang Rui not to expose the fact that she was a high school student before they came here. Lengxi Oiao and Fang Rui agreed that it wasn't appropriate to tell other people that Lengxi Oiao was a high school student. Therefore, they decided to keep it a secret. Sheng Xian thought Lengxi Oiao might major in jade or jewelry, but that wasn't right. After further thinking, she understood that not only professionals could recognize types of jade, some people who saw a lot of jade could know about the types too. Accordingly, Sheng Xian didn't ask more about it. Leng Xioi out chatted with Sheng Xian about something unimportant. It was not really helpful for her investigation, but she still collected useful information. During the brief chat, Leng Xioi Ao observed Sheng Xian's words and behavior. Sheng Xian didn't seem to be a bad person and left a good impression on Leng Xioiao, but some people were good at disguising themselves, so it couldn't prove that Sheng Xian was innocent. Leng Xioiao couldn't ask some questions straightforwardly, but Jiang Yi did her a favor. Miss Shen, have you visited the In family yet? asked Jiang Yi. Yeah, I have. Sheng Xian answered and looked slightly shy. Were you nervous at your first meeting? asked Jiang Yi. Of course. But Mr. An and Mrs. An were very kind, so I was a lot more relaxed afterwards, Sheng Xian admitted. Can you tell me what you prepared when you visited the An family, Miss Shen? asked Leng Xioi Ao. It was a very normal question, so it wouldn't arouse suspicion. In fact, they believed there was something special between Leng Xioi Ao and Ling Tan Ki, so they thought that Leng Xioi Ao needed some advice. I prepared a calligraphy and painting from a famous artist for Mr. An, a jade necklace designed and made by me for Mrs. An. Because I didn't have enough time, I sent Chen Jun's younger sister a jade pendant that I had kept for a long time. It isn't new, but it is very valuable, Sheng Xian said. Leng Xioi I was observing Sheng Xian's expression all the time. When Sheng Xian talked about her gift to An Chen Meng, she seemed very calm. There was nothing wrong with her. So Leng Xioiao guessed Sheng Xian might not know the problem of the jade pendant, but Leng Xioiao didn't ask for more details. After staying in the clubhouse for an hour, Leng Xioiao said that she had to go. Ling Tanki made up an excuse that he needed to talk about something with Leng Xioiao, then followed her out. How is it? Did you find anything? Ling Tanki asked with concern when they were out of the clubhouse. Not yet. Perhaps she's innocent. She simply has something to do with what I'm investigating, so I felt it was necessary to spend some time with her. Please don't be biased against her just because of me, Leng Xioiao said. After spending an hour with her, Leng Xioiao saw nothing wrong with Sheng Xian. Sheng Xian was either innocent or was too good at pretending. If Sheng Xian was good at pretending, it would be difficult for Leng Xioi out to find anything wrong with her even after meeting her a few times. It would take a lot longer, I see. Ling Tanki answered. He didn't ask more about that, and only told Leng Xioi out to turn to him for help if she needed it. Let me give you a ride, Ling Tanki offered. Thanks, but I don't think you should be gone for too long since your friends are here. It's late now, and you would probably separate by the time you give me a ride and come back. I'll just take a car that is arranged by the clubhouse, Leng Xioi Ao said. The clubhouse provided the service of picking up the guests and sending them home. Therefore, it was very convenient to get a car. Great. Since Leng Xioi Ao said that, Ling Tanki didn't insist. After all, she wasn't weak and she could protect herself even if there was danger. After that, Ling Tanki went to ask the clubhouse to arrange for a car to send Leng Xioi Ao home. When Leng Xioi Ao got back to the Leng family's mansion, she saw a new face in the living room. Actually, the person wasn't a stranger, he was also a member of the Leng family, he just rarely came home. The man was Leng Yehua's son who was studying outside, Leng Yakin. Leng Yakin didn't come home until this afternoon. Once he was home, he heard a lot of news about Leng Xioi Ao. Song Mu shared the news about Leng Xioi Ao ending the engagement with Chu Jian in the next day after it happened with Leng Yakin, but he didn't know that Leng Xioi Ao suddenly became excellent at studying till he was back. 
In addition, Lengxi Oya was good at martial arts and rescued people from a fire. One of the people she had rescued was even Lu Chengwei. Leng Yakin heard the news after he was home. When he heard the news, he was amazed. He couldn't believe that Leng Xiaoyao suddenly became so amazing. Therefore, he thought Leng Xiaoyao might be possessed by a ghost. Anyway, he refused to believe that Leng Xiaoyao was outstanding now. It was hard for them to accept the fact that Leng Xiaoyao was completely different now, but it was even harder for them to admit that Leng Xiaoyao became extremely pretty after she came back wearing makeup. At first glance, Leng Cheng Yuan didn't recognize Leng Xiaoyao. He even thought that she was a visitor from another family. So after Leng Xiaoyao greeted him, he was surprised and immediately stood up from the sofa. Ye Oyao, is this? Leng Cheng Yuan couldn't believe his eyes, because Leng Xiaoyao was stunning. Leng Yaqing didn't come back to his senses for a long while. Then he complimented Leng Xiaoyao. I was wondering who this beautiful girl is. It turns out to be Ye Oyao. I knew Ye Oyao is a great beauty, but the freckles on her face affected it. In fact, they were aware that Leng Xiaoyao wasn't ugly, and that the freckles affected her beauty, but when they saw that the freckles were covered, they were surprised to see that Leng Xiaoyao was even prettier than they had expected. Therefore, Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking felt happy for Leng Xiaoyao, but Leng Yehua, Song Mu, and Leng Yakin had a different feeling. Leng Yuki was absent, otherwise she would be as upset as them. Staring at Leng Xiaoyao, Song Mu was jealous. It seemed as if she couldn't wait to tear Leng Xiaoyao's face to pieces. How could Leng Xiaoyao be so beautiful? It was impossible. What if Chu Jianan saw her? After all, Leng Xiaoyao was better than Leng Yuki in every aspect now. What she didn't know was that Chu Jianan had already met Leng Xiaoyao. Although he said he didn't regret leaving Leng Xiaoyao for Leng Yuki, he was actually full of regrets. At this time, he was drinking alone in his apartment. Even though Leng Yuki sent him messages, he didn't bother to reply to her. Chapter 3082 Abnormal people don't deserve normal thoughts. Although Leng Xiaoyao didn't end their engagement because she found a better man, he believed she dumped him in order to ride on a richer man's coattails. Besides, he believed that Leng Xiaoyao didn't really like him in the past. Otherwise, she wouldn't have kept her abilities secret from him. If he had known her abilities and her beauty, he wouldn't have agreed to end their engagement even though he disliked her. Anyway, he would have felt extremely satisfied that his fiancée was outstanding inside and outside. However, upon thinking that Leng Xiaoyao didn't really like him, Chu Jianan felt humiliated. It was hard for him to accept the truth. If Leng Xiaoyao didn't really like him, why wouldn't she let him go in the past? Did she do it on purpose to make him hate her? If so, why did she refuse to end their engagement when he wanted to? Chu Jianan blamed Leng Xiaoyao for everything right now. Therefore, he asked himself why Leng Xiaoyao treated him like that. Dot. Of course, we're all beautiful. I don't believe that Ye Oya would be ugly, Leng Cheng Yuan said with pride. It was true that everyone in the Leng family was very beautiful. I think Ye Oya is the most beautiful in our family right now. She's too attractive to be ignored even in a crowd, Leng Yeking said, and it wasn't even an exaggeration. Reality also proved that Leng Xiaoya was indeed too attractive to be ignored. Hearing Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking's compliments, Song Mu and the others were even more displeased. They refused to admit it, but they couldn't deny that Leng Yeking was right. Once Leng Xiaoyao covered her freckles, she was even prettier than Leng Yuki. Uncle Yeking, stop complimenting me, otherwise I'll become too proud of myself, Leng Xiaoyao joked, but she was actually quite modest. Ha ha, you should be proud of yourself, you should love and cherish yourself so that you won't easily fall in love just because someone compliments you. It's a good way to get rid of bad men, Leng Yeking said. He was most worried about Leng Xiaoyao's marriage now. In his eyes, Leng Xiaoyao was the best. Ordinary men didn't deserve her. He was criticizing Chu Jianan as well, so Song Mu and the others were unhappy, but it was true that Chu Jianan was a bad man when he dated Leng Xiaoyao. Anyway, they still accepted Chu Jianan. Instead, they believed Leng Xiaoya was very lucky to win Chu Jianan's interest, because Leng Yuki was prettier than her, better than her at studying, and was also very accomplished. In fact, 
they invested a lot of money and energy into Lengyuki in order to marry her into a family of higher status. Therefore, no matter whom Chu Jianan had betrayed, it was good enough as long as he treated Lengyuki nicely. Don't worry, I won't make the same mistake again, otherwise I'll be making a joke out of myself, Leng Xioyao said. However, Leng Xioyao also knew that good men were rare in this world nowadays. Most men were good at pretending and sometimes women lost their reason when in love. Therefore, it was hard not to make mistakes again. Nevertheless, Leng Xioyao had no intention of falling in love in this time space, because she would leave sooner or later. If she was in love, it would only cause her to suffer when she had to leave her love. Moreover, she was very young. She was only 18 years old so she could wait till she was over 20 years old. She was busy studying and starting up a company right now. She also needed to complete her redemption. Actually, given her quality, she deserved a quality man like Li Mushen. Suddenly, Leng Xioyao's heart dropped a beat when she thought of Li Mushen. Why did he appear in her mind at this moment? However, she had to admit that Li Mushen was the man who satisfied her needs most till now, even if she didn't clearly know his background. Even though she wasn't clear about his background, she didn't want to collect information about him. After all, Li Mushen was also skilled at hacking, so he would know if she hacked into his computer. In that case, he might become suspicious of her. It hadn't been easy for her to win Li Mushen's trust. It's too early to say that. Once you're attracted to a man, it's not up to reason, Leng Yakin said. He didn't think Leng Xioyao was smart when she said that. Leng Yakin suddenly remembered Zai Ki Yi, and he had to agree with Leng Yakin. He was almost trapped because of love. He had no idea that his girlfriend formed a romantic relationship with him for a purpose back then. I don't think so. Before you know that your partner is terrible, it's understandable that you do everything for your partner. But if you can't leave the person after knowing that he or she is terrible, it'll be your problem. In this world, no one can't live without anyone. Everyone is busy. There is no need to waste time on meaningless things. Only people who have nothing to do will devote themselves to love. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Why can't we leave a terrible person for a better one? If that happens, I think birds of a feather flock together. You can't understand an abnormal person with normal thoughts. Leng Xioyao said. The mistake she meant was that she didn't know that her boyfriend was a terrible man before they were together. Some people changed in a romantic relationship, but she would quickly make the decision to leave him once she found out he was a terrible person. For example, Leng Xioyao tried to win Chu Jianan's love although she knew he disliked her. After she tried, he still had no interest in her so it was time for her to give up. She shouldn't wait till Chu Jianan betrayed her and had an affair with Leng Yuki. Honestly, even Leng Xioya disdained herself for what she had done, but now she would never do such a thing again. Even if she met her Mr. Right, she would still have her own principles. Hearing Leng Xioya's words, both Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking were satisfied. She had finally become mature. In that case, they didn't need to be worried about her life. However, Leng Yakin's family disagreed. Why didn't you give Chu Jianan up when you knew he disliked you? You wasted a lot of time on him. Leng Yakin mocked. In his eyes, Leng Xioya wasn't smart, so it was funny when she acted mature now. Chapter 3083 Don't blame Ye Oiao. Upon hearing that, Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yaking were displeased. Although they agreed that Leng Yakin was right, it was past. Leng Yakin brought it up right now simply to embarrass Leng Xioyao. However, they understood that Leng Xioyao wouldn't be humiliated just like that, so they said nothing. Leng Xioyao didn't get mad, and instead mocked. So I said it was a mistake. Precisely because I made a mistake. I learned it's wrong. Aren't you a college student? Why would you go down a dead end? Don't ignore my real intentions. And it sounds as if you think very highly of Chu Jianan. Do you think it's a good thing that Chu Jianan left me for Leng Yuki? He's a terrible man. I don't think you should be proud of that. You. Leng Yakin was angry. He indeed intended to embarrass Leng Xioya by ignoring her real intention. And it was indeed wrong for Chu Jianan to betray Leng Xioya for Leng Yuki so he suddenly didn't know what to say. All right, I think only you would be proud of such a shameless thing. Anyway, it's not easy for them to get together. Even if I didn't separate them, the Chu family would stop them from being together for the sake of their face, 
don't think it's over now that Chu Jianan has ended the engagement with Ye Oyao, Lang Cheng Yuan said, he was irritated as soon as it was brought up. Song Mil and the others were quite worried when Lang Cheng Yuan mentioned that. What if the Chu family didn't allow Lang Yuki to marry Chu Jianan for the sake of their face? Lang Xi Oyao ignored them afterwards. After chatting with Lang Cheng Yuan, she went back to her room. Outside her room, Lang Xi Oyao was about to open the door, but right at that moment, Leng Yuki walked out of her room from the opposite site. Coincidentally, they saw each other. The moment Leng Yuki saw Leng Xioi Ao, she was struck dumb. Who was she? What was she doing here? However, the next moment, Leng Yuki realized who the girl was. The girl was about to open the door of Leng Xioi Ao's room, so she must be Leng Xioi Ao. Luckily, she could still recognize Leng Xioi Ao, otherwise she would think the girl was Leng Xioi Ao's friend. After realizing that it was Leng Xioi Ao, Leng Yuki was astonished. Even if she knew Leng Xioi Ao could be beautiful with makeup, she didn't expect Leng Xioi Ao to be so pretty. Instantly, Leng Yuki showed her obvious jealousy and felt extremely threatened. Leng Xioi Ao was so pretty now. If Jianan saw her, he might regret leaving her. No. Leng Yuki would never allow that to happen. Leng Xi Oya wasn't surprised that Leng Yuki was so surprised and jealous. In fact, she enjoyed it very much. What? You can't recognize me? I know, I suddenly have a beautiful face and it looks completely different now. It's understandable that you're too shocked to know who I am. Oh, I ran into Chu Jianan today. He didn't recognize me until I greeted him either. Leng Xi Oyao deliberately said with a smile. She intended to fill Leng Yuki with anxiety. In that case, Leng Yuki would have arguments with Chu Jianan. What? You met Jianan today? Leng Yuki was stunned and couldn't accept it. The thing she was most worried about still happened even before she knew about it. He. Leng Yuki wanted to ask Leng Xi Oyao about Chu Jianan's reaction when they met but she felt too embarrassed to say it aloud. It was humiliating. Leng Xioi Ao saw through her. Whether Leng Yuki wanted to know it or not, she would tell her. Do you want to know his reaction when he saw me? Saying that, Leng Xioi Ao mocked and continued. Men are indeed visual animals. When Chu Jianan saw me, he could barely take his eyes off me. Hearing that, Leng Yuki was angrier than ever. Her body was also trembling in anger. When Chu Jianan saw Leng Xioi Ao, he could barely take his eyes off her. Although Leng Xioi Ao was indeed too attractive to be ignored right now, Leng Yuki wouldn't allow her man to pay attention to other girls. Enough. Leng Yuki couldn't stand it any longer. She lost control of herself and snapped at Leng Xioi Ao. Why did you dress up like this? Why did you go to see Jianan? It's all your fault. You've already ended your engagement with Jianan. Stop seducing him. Snap. Leng Xioi Ao was angry and slapped Leng Yuki. Leng Yuki was struck dumb due to the biting pain, and burst into tears. Looking at Leng Xioi Ao, she was full of anger and reluctance but she didn't dare to fight back. Leng Xioi Ao was much stronger than her, so she was afraid that she might be hurt even more if she angered Leng Xioi Ao. Seduce, I'm not as cheap as you. You seduced a man who was the fiancé of your cousin. To be honest with you, I dumped Chu Jianan and I feel disgusted whenever I see him. It's impossible for me to seduce him. You can humiliate yourself, but don't dare humiliate me. I'm not the weak Leng Xioi Ao. If you want to bully me, be prepared to pay the price, Leng Xioi Ao said coldly. She wasn't really mad when Leng Yuki said that, but it didn't mean she would accept it. That being the case, she had to fight back. When Leng Yuki lost control of herself and shouted, the people in the living room heard her. Song Mu and Leng Yakin immediately went upstairs to check the situation, while Leng Cheng Yuan, Leng Yaking, and Leng Ye Hu stayed downstairs. Leng Cheng Yuan was too old to go upstairs quickly and he believed that Leng Xioi Ao could handle it no matter what happened. Leng Yeking hadn't made a full recovery yet, and he also believed Leng Xioi Ao could protect herself, so he didn't go. However, they were displeased when they heard Leng Yuki's words. Leng Yehu felt so embarrassed that he didn't want to go upstairs, especially after hearing Leng Xioi Ao's retort. He felt too humiliated to stay there for a moment longer. How dare she blame Ye Oi Ao? Leng Cheng Yuan said angrily. Then he gave Leng Yehua a glance. He vented his anger on Leng Yehua because Leng Yuki was Leng Yehua's daughter. Leng Yehua knew they were wrong, so he said nothing. 
but he was unwilling to admit it. Leng Yuki and Chu Jianan were in love, and he couldn't stop that. Chapter 3084 Take is cheap. After Song Mu and Leng Yakin reached the third floor, they saw Leng Yuki standing opposite Leng Xioyao. Leng Xioyao seemed to be mocking Leng Yuki, while Leng Yuki looked furious. Besides, there was a red palm on Leng Yuki's cheek. They had all heard the slap, and were aware that it was done by Leng Xioyao. They were furious and Song Mu rushed to question Leng Xioyao. Leng Xioyao, why did you slap my daughter? Because she humiliated me. She said I seduced Chu Jianan. She didn't see us at all. Why did she say something like that? I dumped Chu Jianan. Not to mention that I feel disgusted whenever I see him, Leng Xioyao said. Leng Xioyao wasn't afraid at all to face Leng Yuki's family members. After all, she could easily beat them. You. When Leng Xioyao humiliated Chu Jianan, Song Mu and the others were mad. If you won't allow Leng Yuki to humiliate you, why can you humiliate Jianan? Leng Yakin questioned. Because Chu Jianan betrayed me, he's trash in my eyes. I'm telling the truth, but I've never hurt Leng Yuki. I didn't seduce Chu Jianan, so she can't humiliate me, Leng Xioyao said. Hearing that, they were struck dumb for a second, because Leng Xioyao was right. Chu Jianan had indeed betrayed her. So it was understandable that Leng Xioyao hated him. But Leng Xioyao had never hurt Leng Yuki before. Instead, Leng Yuki had hurt Leng Xioyao. And I can dress as I like. You have no right to judge me. Leng Xioyao glared at Leng Yuki, frightening her. Leng Yuki didn't know what to say, because she knew she was wrong, but she was too angry to control herself just then. Moreover, she was still unhappy that Leng Xioyao became beautiful. She wanted Leng Xioyao to be as ugly as always, so that she could be at ease. Leng Yuki didn't know what to say, nor did Song Mu and Leng Yuken. Leng Xioyao ignored them afterwards, then opened the door and walked into her room. Yuki, Song Mu and Leng Yuken wanted to comfort Leng Yuki, but Leng Yuki was too sad to listen to them. She left them behind and shut them out of her room. Yuki, open the door. Song Mu knocked on the door at once. She knew Leng Yuki was in a terrible mood now, so she wanted to comfort her. Mom, forget it. She's sad right now. We should give her some room. Just let her be alone for a while. Leng Yuken stopped Song Mu. He knew that Leng Yuki didn't want to be bothered right now. In fact, most people preferred to be quiet when they were in a bad mood. Only the others felt it was a good way to comfort them. Anyway, talk was cheap. When someone was in a bad mood, other people couldn't feel the same thing. One could only get rid of the bad mood by oneself. But Kiki. Song Mi was worried. I know you're worried about her, but she needs time to be alone for a while now that she's in a bad mood. You can come to see her after she feels better. I think Yuki will be fine, Leng Yakin said impatiently. Although he understood Song Mi's worries, he blamed her for not knowing what to do. If they went in at this time, Leng Yuki would only feel more embarrassed. Besides, he was also irritated now and needed to be quiet for a while too. After all, Leng Xioyao's complete change had shocked him. Since Leng Yakin said that, Song Mu didn't insist and walked away. Before she left, she glared at Leng Xioyao with deep hatred. Leng Xioyao, back in her room, Leng Xioyao continued to hack into the surveillance cameras around the clubhouse she just visited to watch them. At the same time, she didn't forget to draw game characters. Dot. In the living room, Leng Cheng Yuan and the others knew that Song Mu and Leng Yuken didn't have a good result once they saw their expressions. Only Leng Yehui had mixed emotions, while Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yuking were satisfied. They were like kids at this moment. Dot. Leng Yuki lay on the bed crying for a while, then decided to call Chu Jianan. But Chu Jianan didn't answer her calls. Because Chu Jianan didn't reply to her messages and refused to answer her calls, she was becoming increasingly anxious. She couldn't help thinking too much about it. Did Chu Jianan really regret ending his engagement with Leng Xioyao? Dot. An Chen Jun and his friends didn't separate until 12 a.m. After that, An Chen Jun took Sheng Xian back to his apartment. When they got back to their apartment, Leng Xioyao couldn't see what they were doing, so she stopped spying on them. The next day, Leng Xioyao got up early in the morning, then went to run in the yard. Seeing Leng Xioyao running, Leng Cheng Yuan watched from the side. After she finished running, 
he asked, Yay yeah, Oyao, you have a lot of free time on Sunday, why don't you sleep some more? Although he knew it was Lengxi Oyao's habit to run early in the morning, she rarely had a chance to be free all day, so she could sleep a longer time. However, she didn't do that. Instead, she got up early to run as usual. It's my habit. I can't sleep very long. I would rather get up early to run, Leng Xiaoyao said. All right, I don't know what to do with you. Leng Chengyi Yuan asked, will you go out for the whole day today? Yeah, you guessed correctly, and I'll bring you a gift when I'm back home. Leng Xiaoyao grinned, but she wasn't joking. She really wanted to send Leng Chengyi Yuan a gift in her memories. She had never given Leng Cheng Yuan any gifts before. She was always asking him for gifts. Now she felt lucky that she was back in this time space and made a lot of money. She felt it was necessary to send Leng Cheng Yuan a gift. Oh, a gift. Leng Cheng Yuan was very surprised, because Leng Xi Oyao had never given him any gifts before. But Leng Cheng Yuan didn't want Leng Xi Oyao to spend too much money, so he declined. Great, I accepted your kindness. But I don't think a gift is necessary. Why don't you save your money to buy something you like? Grandpa, please don't upset me. I'm so disappointed. Leng Oya pretended to be sad. Leng Cheng Yuan knew that she was acting, but didn't have the heart to hurt her. All right, all right, I'll accept your gift. Don't be sad. Yay Oya, that's wonderful. Leng Oya was happy. Her quick change annoyed and amused Len Cheng Yuan. Chapter 3085 Go to the Antique Street. What? Grandpa has a gift. Can't I get one too? At this time, Leng Yeking walked out with his crutches and spoke with slight envy. Of course you can have a gift too. I would never forget you, Uncle. Leng Xiaoyao said with a smile. Great. Leng Yeking didn't hesitate to accept it, because he knew that Leng Xiaoyao didn't lack money. It wasn't a big deal if she bought a gift for him. Don't be shameless. You should send Ye Oyo a gift. How could you ask her for a gift instead? Don't you know that you're older than her? Leng Cheng Yuan couldn't stand it and criticized Leng Yeking. I don't want an expensive gift. I simply want Ye Oyo to care about me too. And I've given her a lot of gifts before. Can't I receive a gift from Ye Oyo? Leng Yeking felt aggrieved. Leng Cheng Yuan was struck dumb. All right, all right. I'm not wealthy, I won't buy two expensive gifts for you, I just want you to know that I care about you. Leng Xiaoyao interrupted them at once. She didn't want them to argue. Obviously, she said that to Leng Cheng Yuan in order not to worry him. She wouldn't buy expensive stuff. After having breakfast, Leng Xiaoyao didn't rush to go out. Instead, she went back to her room for a while and continued to spy on Sheng Xian as she worked on the game. It wasn't difficult for Leng Xiaoyao to do two things at the same time. At 8.30 a.m., An Chen Jun left, but Sheng Xian stayed. At 9.30 a.m., Sheng Xian left too and drove to the antique street. The antique street. An idea dawned on Leng Xiaoyao. She could go to the antique street and buy some beautiful objects for Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking. Although Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking weren't antique lovers, nobody would dislike valuable antiques. Although she didn't have the same abilities as Gunning, she could still feel the magical power from afar. Gunning was her mother, so she couldn't be bad at it. Ever since she was little, she had learned a lot from Gunning. In fact, she mastered skills as well as Gunning did. The only things she didn't have were Gunning's jade eyes and magical power. Anyway, Leng Xiaoya made the decision, then carried her laptop and left. She put on light makeup today. At this time, Leng Yuki was already up and was sunbathing in the yard. Therefore, she saw Leng Xiaoya walking out of the house. Because of what had happened yesterday, Leng Yuki didn't sleep well last night and looked haggard. Chu Jianan still didn't reply to her. But she felt better after a night. However, she got anxious again when she saw Leng Xiaoyao. What was Leng Xiaoyao going to do with makeup on? She couldn't stop Leng Xiaoyao from leaving, but she was afraid that Leng Xiaoyao was going to go see Chu Jianan. As a result, she walked up to Leng Xiaoyao at once and asked, Where are you going? None of your business. Leng Xiaoyao said unhappily, Are you going to see Jianan? Leng Yuki asked, Leng Yuki? I told you clearly yesterday, you cherish Chu Jianan, but I disdain him. I feel disgusted to even glance at him. So, don't connect me with him again. It's humiliating to me and I'll pay you back. 
Leng Xiaoya warned coldly, even though she intended to use her beauty to make Chu Jianan regret what he did when she met him, she honestly had no interest in him right now. You. Leng Yuki couldn't think reasonably at that moment. She couldn't be sure whether Leng Xiaoya really meant that. Even if Leng Xiaoya meant that, what would Chu Jianan do? She had no idea what Chu Jianan was thinking right now because he didn't reply to her messages and refused to answer her calls. Leng Xiaoya ignored Leng Yuki afterwards, and directly left and Leng Yuki didn't dare to stop her again, because Leng Xiaoya didn't want the Leng family to know where she was going. She didn't take her family's car, and instead took a taxi. On her way, Leng Xiaoyao continued to spy on Shen Xian. After Shen Xian arrived at the antique street, she didn't go to see those antiques, but went to a large raw jade material store. Leng Xiaoyao was aware that Shen Xian's family was involved in the raw jade material industry, so she wasn't surprised. Dot. When Leng Xiaoyao arrived, Leng Yuki finally received Chu Jianan's call. She was too excited to be mad at him and answered his call without delay. Jianan, what are you doing now? I sent you messages, but you didn't reply. I called you, but you refused to answer my calls, Leng Yuki said, sounding as if she was about to cry. I was drunk last night, and didn't wake up till now, so I didn't hear my phone ringing, Chu Jianan said. Chu Jianan was indeed drunk yesterday but he wasn't so drunk that he couldn't use his phone. He simply didn't want to talk to Leng Yuki. He ignored Leng Yuki for a while because of Leng Xiaoyao, but had no intention of ending their relationship, so he decided to explain it to her after calming down. Oh, how do you feel now? Leng Yuki asked with concern. She didn't doubt his explanation. After all, his explanation made her feel better. However, Upon thinking that Chu Jianan couldn't take his eyes off Leng Xiaoya when they met yesterday, she was still mad. I still have a bit of a headache, Chu Jianan said. Drink some honey water if you have a headache. It can help you feel better, Leng Yuki said. Sure, I need to have a nap. I'll call you later, Chu Jianan said, not wanting to talk to Leng Yuki any longer. In fact, he lost his patience with her and didn't care about her that much, but he didn't have a better choice right now. So he had to stay with Leng Yuki. Um, Jianan, can I ask you about something? Leng Yuki asked. She couldn't relax until she knew everything clearly. What is it? Chu Jianan said. He subconsciously believed it had something to do with Leng Xiaoyao. Did you see Leng Xiaoyao yesterday? Leng Yuki asked, biting her lower lip. She didn't want Chu Jianan to think she was suspicious of and mad at him. Chapter 3086 Evil Blood Jade Bracelet Chu Jianan realized what Leng Yuki wanted to know. Obviously, Leng Xiaoyao said something to Leng Yuki when she got home. Although he didn't know what Leng Xiaoyao said, he believed it couldn't be good news for him. Therefore, he wouldn't allow Leng Xiaoyao to succeed. Chu Jianan said, Yeah, I met her. She was wearing makeup. I didn't recognize her at the beginning. She greeted me. We were all surprised when we saw her. I didn't want to talk to her, but she walked over and suddenly mocked me. So I argued with her for a while. Hearing that, Leng Yuki was extremely relieved. She believed Chu Jianan's reply, because Leng Xiaoyao indeed tended to laugh at them whenever she saw them. What does Leng Xiaoyao want? Your engagement has already ended. There is no relationship between you now. Why can't she leave us alone? When Leng Xiaoyao came home yesterday, she told me that she met you and that you couldn't take your eyes off her. Leng Yuki said, I couldn't take my eyes off her? That's ridiculous. Does she really think she's a great beauty? I just couldn't believe that it was her so I was surprised for a moment. Yuki, no matter what she says, don't believe her. She's simply stirring things up between us. Chu Jianan was annoyed. He couldn't believe that Leng Xiaoyao tried to stir things up between them. Although he denied it, he had to admit that he indeed couldn't take his eyes off Leng Xiaoyao when they met. Leng Xiaoyao was much prettier than he thought, so he regretted leaving her. Knowing that Chu Jianan was angry, Leng Yuki was relieved and convinced that Leng Xiaoyao simply wanted to stir things up between them. However, even if Leng Xiaoyao did that on purpose, she told the truth. Dot. At the same time, Leng Xiaoyao began to observe the objects on the stands along the sides of the road after getting to the antique street. However, she found nothing with magical power. However, 
Coincidentally, she noticed an object with evil power. It was a red jade bracelet, which was made of blood jade. Blood jade was worth a fortune, but it might cause ordinary people trouble. The stand owner looked normal. It seemed that he only got this jade bracelet recently. If he kept it for longer, he might be affected. Normally, evil objects would quickly affect people's health after they wore them. If they put the evil objects at the side, they wouldn't be affected as quickly. Lengxi Oya walked straight over, then picked up the blood jade bracelet and asked, Hey, how much is this? Girl, you have a good taste. This is a blood jade bracelet of top quality. It's really rare, so the price isn't low, but my price is still much lower than that in those stores. This one costs 20,000 yuan. Several people had interest in this bracelet today but they didn't buy it right away because of the price. They need some time to think about it. If you really like it, I suggest you buy it right now. Otherwise you might lose it after they make up their mind, the stand owner said. Looking at Leng Xiaoyao's expensive clothing, he bet she was rich. Therefore, he raised the price from 10,000 to 20,000. Leng Xiaoyao couldn't be more familiar with these tricks. It was impossible to buy a blood jade bracelet with just a few thousand yuan. It cost at least a couple million yuan. Even though Leng Xiaoyao knew this blood jade bracelet was real, she still bargained. I'll pay 10,000 yuan for that. If you won't sell it, I'll leave. Hearing that. The stand owner was displeased. Although he was aware that the original price was 10,000 yuan, what Leng Oya offered was too great of a price cut. No businessman would want to make less money if it was possible. Girl, that's too low. How about you offer me a higher price? The stand owner said. It's only worth 10,000 yuan. If you're willing to sell it, I'll take it. If not, I'll go to look at other stands, Leng Oya said. As she said that. She put the bracelet down and seemed about to leave. This time, the stand donor was anxious. He didn't want the potential buyer to leave, so he immediately agreed. Fine, you can have it. Anyway, this was a fake, so he could make a lot of money even if he sold it at the price of 10,000 yuan. What he didn't know was that it wasn't fake and was actually worth a couple million yuan. Leng Xiaoyao took out 10,000 yuan cash and gave it to the stand donor then left with the blood jade bracelet. In fact, the stand owner didn't lie. Several people indeed had interest in this blood jade bracelet before Leng Xiaoyao. Some of them even wanted to buy it. They didn't think the blood jade bracelet was real, but it was very beautiful, so a young woman and a young man walked back about a dozen minutes later. Unfortunately, Leng Xiaoyao had already taken it away. Hey, where is the red bracelet? The young woman asked in annoyance. It wasn't easy for her to find a bracelet she liked, but it was gone only a few minutes later. A girl just bought it, the stand owner said. He didn't expect this young woman to come back for the bracelet. He only mentioned them to put pressure on Leng Xiaoyao and urge her to buy it. What? It's been sold? The young woman became even unhappier and turned to look at the young man. Brother Yufan, the jade bracelet has been sold. What should we do now? So be it. I'll buy you a better one. Xiao Yufan comforted her. But I want that jade bracelet. Lin Xiaoyi didn't want to give up. It's already been sold. Xiao Yufan said resignedly. Although the jade bracelet was fake in his eyes, it wasn't expensive and Lin Xiaoyi liked it. He could have bought it earlier, but Lin Xiaoyi needed more time to think about it. While they were thinking about it, the bracelet was sold. It wasn't his fault. She should blame herself for that. Why don't we ask the stand owner for the girl's appearance? We can buy it from her. We can pay her more, Lin Xiaoyi suggested. However, even if Lin Xiaoyi gave Leng Xiaoya millions of yuan, Leng Xiaoya wouldn't sell it. Fine. Xiao Yufan gave in, because Lin Xiaoyi insisted and they were free. He agreed. Chapter 3087 Just a Bracelet. After that, Lin Xiaoyi asked the stand owner who had bought the bracelet. The stand owner was displeased, thinking why didn't she buy the bracelet at the very beginning? Since she was willing to pay extra for the bracelet, she could have directly bought the bracelet from him. It would have saved a lot of effort. However, the stand owner still told Lin Xiaoyi who bought the bracelet, because he didn't want to mess with her. Without delay, Lin Xiaoyi and Xiao Yufan went in the direction that Lin Xiaoxia went earlier. As they walked, they searched for Leng Xiaoyao in the crowd. 
because Leng Xiaoyao kept on looking at the objects on the stands along the sides of the road, she didn't walk fast. Therefore, Lin Xie and Xiao Yufan found her a few minutes later. They were sure that she was the buyer. Leng Xiaoyao directly put on the bracelet after buying it. She didn't get rid of the evil power right away, because she planned to test Shen Xian with it. Anyway, the evil power couldn't hurt her. Miss, wait a second. Xiao Yufan shouted before he stood in front of Leng Xiaoyao. However, the moment he saw her face, he was amazed by her beauty. On the other hand, when Lin Xie saw Leng Xiaoyao, she felt jealous, especially when she saw that Xiao Yufan was surprised by Leng Xiaoyao's beauty, she instantly became angry. She pulled Xiao Yufan, Brother Yufan, why are you staring at her like that? Saying that, Lin Xie gave Leng Xiaoyao a glare as if it was Leng Xiaoyao's fault. Lin Xie didn't care about Xiao Yufan's face and directly said it publicly. Xiao Yufan was embarrassed. But he wasn't mad because he knew Lin Xie's character very well. Miss, my friend likes this bracelet around your wrist very much. We stopped by the same stand earlier, but we needed more time to think about it. When we came back, it was already sold. Miss, can you sell it to us? I can pay you double, Xiao Yufan said politely. I'm not just your friend, I'm your fiancé. As soon as Xiao Yufan finished, Lin Xie argued in annoyance. She felt Xiao Yufan might have interest in this girl, so he called her his friend. Hearing Lin Xie's words, Xiao Yufan looked displeased, because Lin Xie wasn't really his fiancée, that was just her own wish. Actually, their families wanted them to be together. However, Xiao Yufan didn't want to be in a romantic relationship with Lin Xie even though they were childhood sweethearts. He only treated her as his younger sister. However, it was unnecessary for him to explain that. After all, Leng Xiaoya was merely a stranger. I'm sorry. I like this bracelet very much as well, so I don't want to sell it, Leng Xiaoya said. She wasn't mad about Lin Xie's attitude, because they weren't important. Xiao Yufan put on a resigned look after he was rejected, but he had no intention of forcing Leng Xiaoya to sell the bracelet to him. However, Lin Xie couldn't accept it. She directly asked. Do you think it's too little if we give you an extra 10,000 yuan? Don't be so greedy, Xie. Xiao Yufan stopped her at once. No matter why Leng Xiaoya refused to sell it to them, they had no right to blame her. Miss, I don't lack money. If I don't like it, I can give it to other people even if it's worth thousands of yuan, but if I like it, I won't give it to anyone even if it's only worth a couple hundred yuan. Leng Xiaoya mocked. She didn't understand why some people felt they were better than other people. Why did she think other people should give her whatever she wanted? Who did she think she was? You. Leng Xie was mad. She wanted to say something again, but Xiao Yufan stopped her. Enough. Can't you be quiet for a while? Afterwards, Xiao Yufan apologized to Leng Xiaoya. I'm sorry. She's a spoiled and immature kid. I'm loved by my family too. But that doesn't mean you can forget your manners. You might be a princess in your family, but you're not outside, Leng Xiaoyao said. She disliked Xiao Yufan's explanation, even though he wasn't mean. After that, Leng Xiaoyao turned around and walked away, leaving them behind. Xiao Yufan wasn't mad when Leng Xiaoyao criticized him, because she was right and that was his thought too. However, due to their family's good relationship, he couldn't say it aloud. Brother Yufan, did you see? Lin Xie couldn't stand it and thought Leng Xiaoya was too arrogant. She felt humiliated. All right, she's right. Do you think you can receive the same treatment outside? Other people are not obligated to please you. Xiao Yufan lost patience. He rarely criticized Lin Xie, because Lin Xie liked him and often listened to him. She hadn't done anything unacceptable yet. I. Lin Xie wanted to defend herself. But she didn't want Xiao Yufan to be angry, so she gave in. If other people dared to say that to her, she wouldn't stand it. It's just a bracelet. If you like it, you can buy the same one. And these are all fake antiques. Aren't you afraid other people will laugh at you for wearing a fake? Xiao Yufan said. He didn't disdain Leng Xiaoyao, but he wanted to persuade Leng Xie to give up. Hearing that, Leng Xie had to agree with Xiao Yufan. So she gave up on the jade bracelet. A while later, Leng Xiaoya reached the raw jade material store where Sheng Xian was. Sheng Xian had bought several raw jade materials, 
and they were being cut open. When Leng Oya walked inside, she deliberately rolled up her sleeve to show the jade bracelet. She wanted Sheng Xian to see it. After Leng Oya walked inside, she didn't walk to Sheng Xian right away. Instead, she walked around first. She knew a little about stone gambling, but was barely comparable to Ganing. She couldn't see whether there was jade in the raw jade materials with only her eyes. However, she could touch the stones one by one and feel whether there was jade with her magical senses. It only took longer. Anyway, since she was already here, she decided to try it. Perhaps she would have good luck today and could find jade. Chapter 3088 Wasted Kindness Lengxi Oya decided to start from half-cut raw jade materials, because it was more likely to find jade from them. However, they were a lot more expensive than whole raw jade materials and there might just be a thin layer of jade. If there was only a thin layer of jade, she might lose a fortune. The prices of half-cut raw jade materials were estimated according to the value of the possible jade inside. For example, the first one Leng Xiaoyao saw was the size of a basketball. It was cut a little and showed green. However, nobody knew whether there was really jade inside. If Leng Xiaoyao wanted to figure it out, she would have to pick them up one by one to observe them. After observing the first one with her magical senses, Leng Xiaoyao didn't feel much magical power. It meant there might just be a thin layer of jade inside. It wasn't worth the price on the tag. All the half-cut raw jade materials were worth millions of yuan while the whole raw jade materials were worth hundreds of yuan. Leng Xiaoyao observed five of them, but all of them weren't worth the price. When Leng Xiaoyao observed the sixth one, she finally found one with thick magical power. Although she didn't know what jade it was nor its value, she was sure that it was worth more than the price on the tag. As long as she could make money, Leng Oya was willing to try it. Without delay, she bought this half-cut raw jade material. There weren't many half-cut raw jade materials in the store. Leng Oya checked about a dozen, and yet there were only two that were worth more than their prices. The rest weren't very valuable or were simply stones. Therefore, Leng Oya bought the two valuable half-cut raw jade materials. At this moment, a middle-aged man walked over and kindly reminded her, Miss, you bought two at a time. Aren't you afraid to lose money? They look good on the outside. But there might not be valuable jade inside. Thank you for your reminder but I think these two are worth the money. I want to try it. If I lose the money, I will accept the result. Leng Oya politely replied to his kind reminder. Fine. The man sighed and said nothing else. He was only afraid that Leng Oya might suffer a great loss. He had no intention of interfering with her decision. After all, he had no right to do so. Right at that time, a man said disdainfully, Giyankai. You're too timid when buying the raw jade materials. Why did you stop other people from doing it? What? Are you jealous? Even if you're jealous, you can do nothing about it because you don't have money. Giyankai was the middle-aged man who kindly reminded Leng Xiaoyao out to be careful, while the man who interrupted them was a short, middle-aged, fat man. He seemed to be a whale. Behind him were two young men in a suit. They were obviously his subordinates. Nonsense. Will you pay? I didn't stop the girl from buying the raw jade materials. Giyankai retorted in annoyance. You didn't stop her? Then why did you bother to say that to her? You said that, which proves that you tried to stop her, Liu Pei said domineeringly. You. Giyankai was mad. If Liu Pei was reasonable, he could talk to him about it. But Liu Pei was domineering. It was impossible for them to understand each other. Once Giyankai argued with Liu Pei, he would never win. Liu Pei looked unpleasant, and Leng Xiaoyao had always been straightforward, so she said, Hey, it's none of your business. Why are you shouting here? You. Liu Pei was angry, then he blamed Leng Xiaoyao. I stood up for you. Why did you criticize me? You didn't cherish my kindness at all. Liu Pei was very loud and angry. So he immediately attracted attention from other people in the store. People turned to look at him at once including Sheng Xian. After she walked over, she saw Leng Xiaoyao and was slightly surprised. She didn't expect to meet Leng Xiaoyao here, but she didn't go closer. She decided to see what had happened first. Leng Xiaoyao sneered at Liu Pei and asked instead, You stood up for me? I didn't cherish your kindness. Come on, 
this gentleman did nothing bad to me, why would you bother to stand up for me, don't you just want to do something bad using that excuse, I'm not an idiot, she disliked it when people did bad things with the excuse that they stood up for her, there were grudges between Liu Pei and Gu Yankai, so Liu Pei deliberately attacked Gu Yankai, by chance, he saw Gu Yankai reminding Leng Xioi out to be careful, so he seized that chance and picked on Gu Yankai, you, because Leng Xioi pointed it out, Liu Pei felt humiliated and angry, don't get me wrong, I got you wrong, how did I do that, there is no grudge between you and me, if you hadn't mentioned me all of a sudden, I wouldn't have argued with you, Leng Xioi mocked, all right, I'm busy now, please stop bothering me, saying that, Leng Xioi ignored Liu Pei and walked to the counter, Liu Pei was furious, but he would only cause himself trouble if he continued to bother Leng Xioi Ao. However, if he stopped, he was still wrong in other people's eyes. After all, he stirred things up first. Therefore, Liu Pei didn't want to stay there any longer. He glared at Leng Xioi Ao's back, then at Gu Yankai before leaving. Actually, he wanted to curse Gu Yankai before he walked away, but he didn't want other people to know that he stirred things up on purpose. After settling the bill, Leng Xioi walked to the place where they cut the raw jade materials. Gu Yankai also wanted to know whether there was jade in the two half cut raw jade materials, so he followed Leng Xioi Ao. Even though he didn't think there would be jade in the two half cut raw jade materials, he still looked forward to seeing the result. When Leng Xioi Ao walked there, she met Shen Xian face to face. Even if Leng Xioi Ao targeted Shen Xian, she couldn't let her know that. Therefore, she acted surprised. Miss Shen, what a coincidence. I didn't expect to see you here. It's indeed a coincidence. I didn't want to interrupt you earlier. Shen Xian smiled. Because Shen Xian was aware that Leng Xioi Ao knew a bit about Jade, she wasn't very surprised that Leng Xioi Ao bought two half cut raw jade materials. She only thought it was a little risky. Chapter 3089 That Costs Much More When Shen Xian's sight fell on the two raw jade materials in Leng Xioi Ao's hands, she noticed the blood jade bracelet too. Then she paid more attention to it. At this moment, Leng Xioi Ao didn't miss any of her expressions, but Shen Xian looked very normal. However, that couldn't prove anything. Miss Shen, may I help? Leng Xioi Ao asked. Oh, I'm just looking at the jade bracelet on your wrist. Shen Xian said, is there anything wrong with this bracelet? Leng Xioi Ao asked confusedly, not at all, I can't be more familiar with jade, so I thought of blood jade the moment I saw your bracelet, I was wondering whether this one is made of blood jade, so I paid more attention to it, Shen Xian replied, in fact, Shen Xian wanted to ask Leng Xioi Ao whether the jade she was wearing was blood jade, but there were too many people, so she hesitated to ask. If it was blood jade, it would be no problem, but if not, Leng Xioi Ao would be embarrassed. She might be telling everyone that Leng Xioi Ao was wearing fake jade. Hearing Shen Xian's words, Leng Xioi Ao understood her intention. Miss Shen, if you don't mind, we can have some coffee after cutting these raw jade materials, then we can have a look at it, Leng Xioi Ao said. Why not? Shen Xian agreed with alacrity. She didn't think Leng Xioi Ao had other intentions. She just felt that Leng Xioi Ao simply gave her a chance to see whether the jade was real. Leng Xioi Ao couldn't see any problems with Shen Xian, because no stone cutter was free currently. Leng Xioi Ao had to wait for a while. Are these your raw jade materials, Miss Shen? Leng Xioi Ao asked Shen Xian. Yeah, I've cut several of them open, but none are valuable. Two were useless stones and one was cheap, this is the last one, if there is no jade inside, I'll stop gambling for the time being, Shen Xian said, Shen Xian knew a lot about stone gambling, but it mainly relied on one's luck to cut out jade, Shen Xian often bought raw jade materials, although most of them weren't valuable, she had cut out jade before, the probability was about 5%, but as long as she cut out a piece of jade, she could make a lot more than she paid for those raw jade materials. However, the jade Shen Xian had cut out was at the middle level at the most. Most were at middle low level. It mainly relies on one's luck to cut out jade. If knowledge is enough, those experts would come and buy raw jade materials every day. 
then they can all be rich, Leng Xiaohao said. If they wanted to cut out jade very often, they must have special skills, like what Leng Xiaohao had. You're right. Chen Xin agreed. After a third of Chen Xin's raw jade material was cut off, they saw green. Even if Chen Xin had cut out jade before, it didn't happen often, so she was still extremely excited. She was only afraid that it might just be a thin layer of green again. Chen Xin was very nervous, waiting for the stone cutter to continue. Luckily, there was really jade inside. Although it was just at the middle low level, it was still valuable and Shen Xian was very happy. Congratulations, Miss Shen, Leng Xiaohao said. Thanks, Miss Leng. Shen Xian replied. Upon seeing the jade, many people offered a price for it, but Shen Xian turned them down. She came to buy raw jade materials in order to get jade. After Shen Xian got the jade, it was Leng Xiaohao's turn. Everyone was looking forward to seeing whether there was jade in Leng Xiaohao's half-cut raw jade materials. They guessed whether she could make money. Since the raw jade materials were half-cut, it was more likely to see jade in them. Therefore, they mainly wanted to see whether the jade in them was more valuable than the half-cut raw jade materials. Shen Xian clearly knew that it relied on one's luck to cut out jade so she didn't bother to ask Leng Xiaoya whether she was confident. When Shen Xian watched the raw jade materials being cut open, she was very nervous, but Leng Xiaoya looked extremely calm. Was she confident, or did she not actually care about it? Even if Shen Xian had doubts, she didn't ask about it. After a cut, a piece of jade came out. Both its quality and color were at a high level. The first layer wasn't valuable, but it was totally different after a cut. Wow. This is a middle high level confederate rose. The stone cutter exclaimed, because stone gambling wasn't very popular here, not many people were interested in it. As a result, they would rarely see jade cut out. Therefore, the stone cutter was greatly surprised to see a piece of high quality jade. In an instant, everyone was shocked. The next moment, they turned to look at Leng Xiaoya with admiration and jealousy. They might not have interest in stone gambling but most of them knew the value of the confederate rose jade. Leng Xiaoyao could make a fortune with it, so it was impossible for them not to be jealous. Jesus, it's a confederate rose. That's amazing, right? I'm so jealous of her. She can make a fortune with it. If I had known there was a confederate rose in it, I would have bought it. Stop dreaming. Everyone would have bought it if we had known all about it beforehand. Dot. Now we're sure there is jade inside but we don't know the size yet. It's hard to see whether it's worth a lot, right? Perhaps there is only a small piece of jade. After all, this half-cut raw jade material costs a lot. Yeah, if the jade in it isn't worth over 10 million yuan, she will suffer a loss. Dot. Some people were very jealous of seeing Leng Xiaoya make money, but their words made sense, so they weren't criticized. Shen Xian and Gu Yang Kai didn't expect Leng Xioi out to cut out jade right away, and the jade was of high quality. They were both surprised and were envious of her, but they weren't jealous. Congratulations, Miss Leng. You have a piece of very valuable jade, Shen Xian said sincerely. However, Leng Xioi didn't look excited at all. Shen Xian was very curious about the reason why she stayed so calm. Was Leng Xioi hiding her real emotions? Dot. Gu Yankai also wondered the same thing. However, other people were attracted by the jade, so they didn't pay much attention to Leng Xiaoyao's reaction. Chapter 3090 It's unbelievable. Thank you, Miss Shen. Please let me buy the coffee for you later, Leng Xiaoyao offered. Sure, you can pay the bill, Shen Xian said. A cup of coffee wouldn't cost much, so Shen Xian accepted it. They didn't know the size or the value of the jade yet. If Shen Xian turned Leng Xiaoyao down right now, Leng Xiaoyao would be embarrassed. Leng Xiaoyao looked so calm that she shouldn't care about the result very much. In that case, there was no need for Shen Xian to be worried. Even if they weren't sure of the size yet, many people asked Leng Xiaoyao whether she was willing to sell it after knowing the type. However, Leng Xiaoyao definitely wouldn't sell it, if she couldn't find real antiques later. She would give the jade to Leng Cheng Yuan and Leng Yeking as a gift. The raw jade material was still being cut. After another cut, a larger area of green showed. It was the size of two palms. This time, 
it was highly likely for it to be a valuable jade. No one doubted whether it was big enough to make a lot of money. If they said that right now, they would appear too jealous of Leng Xiaoyao and would be embarrassed by the result. Leng Xiaoyao didn't look excited, but Shen Xian and the others felt excited for her, especially since before the jade was fully cut out, anything could happen. However, after another cut, the jade only became larger, so no one thought there would be accidents anymore. At the same time, they became more envious of Leng Xiaoyao. Wow! She can make a fortune today, right? I'm so envious of her. Why does she have such good luck? I've never been so lucky before. She's not only lucky, she is also very rich. And she has skills and courage too. If someone had told you there is high quality jade in this raw jade material, would you have the courage and money to buy it? You're right. Money is most important. After all, no one can be brave without money. The Yankai is a great example. Yeah. Gu Yankai is an excellent master's student. He has cut out several pieces of jade too, but he doesn't have money now, so he can't buy any raw jade materials even if he looks around here all the time these days. He had bad luck and was trapped by his younger brother and mother. Poor thing. Leng Xiaoyao heard their discussion clearly and felt that history was always repeating itself. Among Ganing's subordinates, many failed due to an accident or a scheme, then they met Ganing and their lives totally changed. They never kept it a secret, so it was known to many people. After all, they didn't think it was embarrassing. Instead, they kept it in mind and always felt grateful to Ganing. Gu Yankai also heard their discussion, and felt extremely awkward. He couldn't stand it any longer and snapped at them. Enough. How could you discuss me right in front of my face? Can't you see me? Actually. His story wasn't a secret in this place and he had heard a lot worse before, so he kind of got used to it, but it didn't mean he could accept it. Three years had passed, but he could never get over it. Therefore, he cut off his relationship with his mother and younger brother, otherwise he might lose control of himself and kill them. Normally, parents cared about their kids, but some parents were even crueler than strangers. Besides, it wasn't his biological mother, it was his stepmother. Hearing Gu Yankai's voice, they shut up at once, feeling embarrassed. They saw Gu Yankai, so they talked about him. If they hadn't seen him, they might not have mentioned him. In fact, they didn't do it on purpose. They only remembered his story, because most people were attracted to the jade, they paid little attention to Gu Yankai afterwards. Before long, the jade was cut out. Leng Xiaoyao paid 8 million yuan for this half-cut raw jade material, but the jade in it was worth at least 20 million yuan. In other words, she made a fortune. Jesus, how much is it worth? I think it's worth at least 10 million yuan. After all, its confederate rose at middle high level so it won't be cheap. I'm so envious of her right now. Me too. Dot. Everyone was envious of Leng Xiaoyao. Miss Leng, it's incredible. Cheng Xian complimented. She really admired Lady Ning for her abilities and good luck. Anyway, it was amazing that Leng Xiaoyao could cut out high quality jade. Thank you, Miss Shen. I have good luck today, Leng Xiaoyao said. She couldn't tell Cheng Xian that she had magical senses. Whether it's your luck or abilities, you're unbelievable, Miss Leng, Cheng Xian said. Leng Xiaoyao smiled but said nothing. Miss, will you sell the jade? Someone asked Leng Xiaoyao. I'm sorry. This is a gift for my family. I won't sell, Leng Xiaoyao said. Cheng Xian also wanted to buy it, but she gave up since Leng Xiaoyao had no intention of selling it. Cheng Xian's family was very rich, and they didn't lack money, but it was difficult to cut out jade, so the Shen family didn't have extra jade to give to Cheng Xian. Then, Leng Xiaoyao's second raw jade material was cut out. Although they didn't think Leng Xiaoyao's good luck could help her get two pieces of jade, they were looking forward to seeing the result after the first piece of jade. In addition, they were more nervous at this time. After the raw jade material was cut out, purple jade showed. V Violet. The stone cutter was shocked again. He abruptly turned to look at Leng Xiaoyao to observe her. Who is this girl? She was able to find jade and extremely valuable jade at that. It was amazing. Hearing the stone cutter's words, everyone was surprised as well. Dot. 
What, Violet? Everyone subconsciously turned to look at Leng Xiaoyao with admiration and jealousy. Leng Xiaoyao stayed calm as usual. There was only a little smile on her lips. Jesus, it's unbelievable. A piece of Confederate rose was just cut out, and now there is a piece of Violet.